what do you call this hairstyle? The chances are that if you're from the United States, you'll call it a mohawk. But traditionally in the United Kingdom and perhaps other parts of the English-speaking world, it's called a mohican. Now these are two names, Mohican and Mohawk, both belonging to different Native American tribes living in the northeast of today's United States. The Mohawk people actually named the Mohawk River Valley. They were to the east of the Hudson River. And on the other side of this river, you find the Mohicans, today still present in both the United States and in Canada. To begin with the Mohawk, they are more frequently known to history along with four other nations, the Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca, later to be joined by a sixth nation, the Tuscarora, and they are known to history as the Iroquois. Now, I actually talked about Iroquois in my video about the Algonquin Basque pidgin language which existed and that the term Iroquois might actually be from this pidgin. Now, the Iroquois are most frequently referred to as the Iroquois Confederacy, as these nations came together into a confederacy to be stronger in the opposition to other tribes and indeed to rule collectively. They called themselves the Haudenosaunee, which in English translates to the people of the longhouse, signifying that they had come together as one people in the traditional longhouses in which they lived. Now, the Mohicans are not a part of this confederacy. And in fact, they were a different, speaking a different language group, an Algonquian language, whereas the Iroquois nations were speaking an Iroquoian language. So that's a difference between them. And actually, they went to war with one another. And in 1680, the Mohicans had largely been displaced from some of their original lands by the Mohawk themselves, who were advancing along with the other Iroquois nations, fighting against many of the Algonquian-speaking peoples who had formed their own confederacy, the Huron or Wianna. Confederacy. Now, the Mohicans actually called themselves the Mohecanu, which means something like the people of the continually flowing waters. And it's thought that this points specifically to the waters of the Hudson River, a really large river in the area along whose banks they were living. Now, they came into contact with Europeans, first probably the Dutch and the English, with whom they traded beaver pelts and other things. But it's likely that when the Dutch and English asked them what they were called, what their tribal name was, that they probably misunderstood. And actually, Mohekanu in, became in Dutch something like Mahigan or Mahigan. Uh, and then this was misheard by an Englishman, and the Englishman then thought, what are we, a Dutchman? He's probably saying something like Mohican. So that is how the term Mohican has entered the English language, a transcription of a poorly transcribed Dutch version of what the real word was. So now the question is, which one should the hairstyle be named after, the Mohawk people or the Mohicans? Well, let's take a look at some historical illustrations that we have that might shed some light onto this. And as you can see from these four Mohawk kings, as they are called, none of them really sport the kind of Mohawk hairstyle that we'd be expecting. And now, yeah, let's take a look at this illustration. Again, it, it's that's closer, it's almost there, but as you can see, the, the front part of the head is actually shaved. So it's not quite what we today know as a Mohawk or as a Mohican. We do actually have a contemporary literary source that describes how the Mohawk people did their hair. This was from James Smith, who was held captive and later became a fully-fledged member of the Mohawk tribe during the French and Indian Wars. He said, A number of Indians collected about me, and one of them began to pull hair out of my head. He had some ashes on a piece of bark in which he frequently dipped his fingers in order to take a firmer hold. And so he went on as if he had been plucking a turkey until he had all the hair clean out of my head, except a small spot about three or four inches square on my crown, the remaining hair was cut and three braids formed which were decorated. And actually those three braids are very important to Mohawk people and they are still symbolized, I believe, by three sort of braids that are added onto the modern headdress uh, of various Iroquois people as a representation of that. But really, this isn't quite the same hairstyle as the modern mohawk. It's more that you have a sort of square at the back and then braids coming out of it, while the front of the head, as he described, was plucked free of hair. So if not from the mohawk or the mohicans, then where does this hairstyle actually come from? 
Well, the reason why this hairstyle is associated with the Mohawk people can be dated back to 1939, when a film was released called Drums Along the Mohawk. I actually accidentally watched it once, and it wasn't actually that bad. This is years ago, and I found it again during the research of this video. It's basically a film that's set in the Mohawk River Valley, of course named after the Mohawk people, during the American Revolution, when the Iroquois Confederacy had largely sided with the British, while the film features a hero who is an American uh, patriot who goes and fights with the patriot militia and various Mohawk Native Americans come and attack the valley all sporting the traditional or I shouldn't say traditional but what we now see as the traditional Mohawk hairstyle but if this is a historical to the actual native Mohawk people then where has the inspiration for this hairstyle come from well there is actually another Native American tribe that does sport the kind of mohawk or mohican hairstyle that we know today and they are called the Pawnee. Now the Pawnee actually live a long way away from the Mohawk and the Mohicans who happen to be neighbors. The Pawnee instead lived in what is largely today the state of Kansas um, on the southern plains, the Great Plains, and so were very different background to the lush forests of New York State and the border with Canada. Now the Pawnee are a very interesting people and their hairstyles do appear to be more like the Mohawks that we know as we can see from these historical photographs photographs of Pawnee tribesmen and we even have found combs that were made from imported metal that was traded to them so clearly grooming and hair was very important to the Pawnee people living out on the plains. Now the Pawnee historically are very interesting because one, they were one of the Plains tribes that were actually allied to the United States and during the American Civil War they were the main force that was meant to guard the Union Pacific Railway as it made its way across the West from particularly their arch enemies the Lakota or the more commonly known as the Sioux people whom they fought against for many many years. This enmity between the Pawnee and the Lakota is actually shown in the film Dances with Wolves where the Pawnee characters all sport these great looking mohawks while the Lakota are shown with long hair. Now what's interesting is that in 1944 this kind of hair was on newspapers around the world and this was as part of the D-Day landings in which various airborne units, paratroopers of the United States Air Force were indeed sporting mohawk hairstyles and native inspired war paint. One of the stories goes that it was from the 13th Airborne, who the Dirty 13th as they're sometimes called, whose commando was part Native American and decided to follow in the ways of his ancestors and or perhaps not as we've discussed and to shave his hair in a certain way as well as to apply war paint. While another story goes that because the American paratroopers were all shouting Geronimo, the name of another Native American leader, they decided to fully embrace that spirit and to dress up in a mock way as Native Americans when they jumped out of the plains in the hope that they would also scare the defending Germans by their appearance. Whatever the truth, photos like this one were plastered across newspapers and in the 1950s many different counterculture movements started to wear similar looking mohawk styles because of its appeal and its rough look. And then eventually this was also famously adopted by movements such as the punk movement in the United States and the United Kingdom and it remains popular in these circles today. So now to address the first question of this video, which was why is it known as a Mohawk in the United States and as a Mohican in the United Kingdom? Well, I've got a theory and I'm not sure if it's right, but I would like to know what you think in the comments below. Now, my theory is that in the United States, because of course that is where the Mohawk are and being in New York State, you know, that's a fairly frequently visited part of the country, an influential part of the country, that the term Mohawk was quite well known. Whereas in the United Kingdom, this might not have been the case. Now, in the United Kingdom, newspapers before D-Day were printing this image across it. And I think that's when obviously this hairstyle became popular and then it was seen in counterculture in the 1950s. And that while Americans were calling it a Mohawk hairstyle in the United Kingdom, they were calling it Mohican perhaps because of the very famous novel 
by James Fenimore Cooper known as The Last of the Mohicans, which was incredibly popular throughout Europe and indeed in the United States as the kind of Western genre was incredibly popular. And there were in fact various films that came after its 1826 release. For example, there was a film in 1909, another in 1911, again in 1920, another one in 1932, one in 1936, another one in 1947, and finally another in 1950. Bearing in mind that these films were popular in picture houses and cinemas across the United Kingdom, it might not be surprising that for them the word Mohican, considering it was a Native American tribe that began with Mo something, might have come off the tongue more easily than Mohawk, which might have been a fairly unknown term before the use of the internet and Americanisms coming into British English. And that is my theory on that. I have no idea if that is the reason why, but I think it's because of the popularity of The Last of the Mohicans that linguistically more British people would reach for Mohican as the term rather than Mohawk, which was more common in the United States for the reasons I've given above. But do let me know what you think about my theory. Am I completely off the mark? Is there a great reason that I have overlooked? Um, yeah, let me know. I thought this was a kind of interesting video to make a topic about. Partially also because of the previous video that I recorded last week on the Algonquin Basque Pigeon uh, and sort of wondering about it myself as well. Do let me know in the comments below if you have enjoyed this video and give me a thumbs up if that's the case because then I can know what to make in future as well. Until then, I have been Hilbert and this has been The History. <laughs>